Hey, hey, guys, this is Hawkeye, and I am here with an all-new game for myself that I have acquired over the Christmas holidays. It is Jurassic World Evolution. Now, I've attempted to get this game several times through Steam and had no success. For some reason, it just would not initiate, but thank to, thanks to Epic Games, they were offering it free for like seven days during the holidays and I was able to get it and it works just fine now this game is awesome guys that's all I can say and I have gone through played it for a few hours managed to get fairly fairly good ways but I think what I need to do here I'm gonna go ahead and start a new campaign and a new save game just with you guys so we can see we, how we can progress and maybe we can do better than I did even the first time around what we're going to do here, guys, now there are several things you can do in this game. You have the campaign, you have challenges. This I wouldn't suggest doing until you get much further along in your skills. Same with sandbox. It's kind of like you can do whatever the heck you want to do. You can you know, control the economy, dinosaur behavior, everything. I would go through the campaign first because it kind of walks you through, gets you initiated get you started and the main goal of it is to get all of your uh, parks to I think a five star yeah I think all of them have to be five star I'm not sure if that's the case but I'm sure it takes some time and then once you get good at that you can start buying all these expansions you're seeing flashing up on the right uh, Claire's Sanctuary and uh, Return to Jurassic Park which I think is the newest one <laughs> You also have like the carnivore dinosaur pack which adds additional carnivores to the game now there are 48 dinosaurs in the base game so there's plenty of dinosaurs don't worry about that but we're gonna go ahead and start a new campaign here guys and as you can see these are the expansions that I have yet to purchase or unlock don't need to go there just yet we just need to head for the main one I'm sure many of you might have played this game Many of you may have not, but right now, it's been on sale quite frequently. Hello. May I say welcome? My name is Dr. Ian Malcolm. You're well, <laughs> correction, you should have heard of me, especially now that you're here. So before you are the islands that you need to manage, if you can. The five deaths. Jeez, if only... If only there had been five. That's definitely his voice, without a doubt. Unless somebody's damn good at impersonating him. Okay, this is as good a place as any to begin. Isla, Isla Matanceros. Matanceros, okay. It's relatively stable. Yeah, you can uh, you can get your feet wet here. And you should. Just diving into the deep end of the pool is where the big, angry, hungry things are. <laughs> and uh, you want to be ready before you try that. Yeah, he was the Chaos Theory. He played the uh, Chaos Theory mathematician that was in the original movie. He was in the second movie. And he did a cameo appearance in Jurassic World. I'm Cabot Finch, public relations and crisis management, and I'm here to help you. Yeah, you'll start by building a Hammond are. creation lab. All right, guys. Basically, you start We've already off. already started on an enclosure for you. You should just attach it to the side. But watch out for dinosaurs. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, they will talk in off and on, guys. And, it, you know, sometimes they're helpful. That guy's just kind of an irritant. But basically, what we need to do is we need to create a Hammond Creation Lab. And you need these for each enclosure. I would suggest having each you know, a Hammond Creation Lab at each um, herbivore enclosure or carnivore enclosure, especially each carnivore enclosure. You can kind of mix the herbivores together, but carnivores, mm, not so much. You got to have them all by them. They're lonesome. At least that's the way I understand it. Makes sense anyway. But we have a nice little enclosure here, and you can kind of take a look at it. I'm just going to show you around here just a little bit here. We've already got some stuff they set up for you. This normally has to be built in some of the islands that you're going to visit. This is just the first island. You basically come here to this island. 
you get it up and running and somewhat successful then you unlock another island and that one's going to be a little more challenging to get up and running and sometimes you have to do a little bit of exchanges between islands but you can't unlock uh, other dinosaurs unless you start getting the other islands up and running you'll basically you'll get so far on this one and then you can't get any more dinosaurs so you have to do the other islands there's no options but anyway you have got some buildings here that you can work with this is a power plant this here is the research lab and we'll go into that more in detail later this is the fossil uh, lab or whatever you call it uh, other than that you got the enclosure not too much else left here there's some power grids set up and there's the start of the monorail system which isn't going to be available to you until much later right now it just kind of brings you to the island that's all it does all right we are going to go ahead and start as they've asked us to do that is the Hammond Creation Lab. Now it shows you as having it anywhere within here. You actually can put this anywhere if you so desire, but for this you really want to put it right here because that's where the enclosure is. And once you place it, Let's it'll focus start on building. What you're here to do, which is create dinosaur facilities on the islands we call the Five Deaths. Five deaths. Actually, That's interesting. Las Cinco Muertes. <laughs> because Cinco Spanish Marquez. is the lingo of choice around here. Yeah, like I said, he's a little bit irritating, honestly. You'll need to connect it to the pre existing network of paths and the power grid. Well, the power grids are a little bit complicated. It took me, actually, I had to go on uh, YouTube and do a tutorial to figure it out. The, uh, you, it really is a little bit tricky, but these little little stations right here that I'm pointing to, they're called substations. They basically give a circle of influence, I guess is the best word to use. Anything within that circle will be powered. Anything outside the circle obviously will not be unless you connect it up with these pylons and another substation. Like this would be a circle of influence, which is important for building some other later structures here well let me go ahead and put the path like he suggested all you have available to you is the cheat path and we just basically have to connect it up to there and it's now not a comes big deal. the real test incubating a dinosaur you'll start with a struthiomimus select the creation lab and pick a hatchery bay there's enough genome data for your first viable dinosaur all right struthiomimus that is and you're going to sit there and say, it looks like an ostrich. Well, that's because it's called ostrich mimic. That's what struthiomimus means in Latin. But we will go ahead and hatch one of these guys. Right now, it's the only one available. You basically, you, later you can modify their genomes. That's something that comes later. You can do things like change their uh, skin color. You can change their viability, you can change their aggression, things like that. We're going to go ahead and incubate him. The machinations of the ambitious, undoing extinction, playing with nature's laws. What can possibly go wrong? <laughs> Come on, Doctor. You know we've learned so much and invested even more in our Jurassic operations since the last time. Yes, Mr. Finch, yes, the... The last time. There's always a last time. And a next. <laughs> He's a great actor. He was a great character in that, too. All right. Well, we can now release the dinosaur. And it does a little cut scene where you can see the little dinosaur coming out. And as you can see, he looks pretty Life. much it like begins. an ostrich. The most precious moment. The result of incalculable actions and reactions, trials and errors, genetic mutations and unknowable combinations, chaos, all leading to a living, breathing, thinking being, an entity, distinct and unique. And now we, you, just manufacture them. So well done, 
I guess. <laughs> the eternal pessimist, Dr. Ian. And you can actually zoom out, zoom out on this guy. You can pan around, get a good look at him. Yeah, you almost could see him with feathers. Except those little clawed hands. Now, this guy's going to get hungry, so we're going to need to do a few more things to make it better for him. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and put some The Hammond Foundation things. has three main areas of interest. Security, entertainment, and science. I've already nudged the heads of each division to reach out to you personally. They'll offer opportunities and incentives for you to be part of their team. Choose one of their contracts. It'll help you develop your facility. All right, guys. I am not sure which... Last time I chose the security division contract. I think this time I might switch and go to the science contract. Because I think we're going to get a little more advanced... Ah, Dr. Dua. This is our new in director of operations. Dinosaurs locations. I'm aware, Cabot. I'm Dr. Dewar. I run the science division of our operation. Okay. You're going to need to build your reputation in the science division. Not easy with me around, but you'll manage. That means managing our dinosaur population and seeing that they are flourishing. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and accept hers. And Contracts can be requested from the division heads inside the control room. Complete these to increase your reputation and gain additional revenue to keep expanding your park. All right. Like I said, he's a little irritating. Anyway, when they come up and they ask you to take part in um, missions and things like that, take them. They're very important, especially in the early part of this game. Let's go to operations. We need to create an expedition center. That is crucial. And that's crucial for every one of the islands that you're going to visit. You need to get one of those built if they don't have one already present as soon as possible. They're not cheap. So what I would suggest is putting it over here next to this um, Hammond Center. That way we can keep it close to the power grid. And it can be fit in here. You have to rotate this guy around with the X and the uh, Z. And that arrow you see is where the path is going to come. We need to make sure we get that right. Well, let's try to get this right in here. Kind of fit it. I'm kind of funny about how things have to fit here. Let's see. Yeah, right there. That's good. So, one more thing. Your reputation. Your rep, quote unquote. Keep an eye on it, okay? If you have a solid reputation with a division, you're more likely to benefit from them. Financially, I mean. But, like life, it's a balancing act. <coughs> Each division is vying for your attention, and if they don't get it, they tend to take it personally. Yeah, try to keep them all happy. He's right about that. Do your best to keep them all happy because. They basically mean money. So I don't have the path connected. Now, as you can see, there are trees in the way. That's not an issue. If you need to get rid of that, you need to come down here to... Well, I can't... Well, it won't let me do it at the moment. Let me go ahead and set up the path first. I'm going to have to put it through the trees. <laughs> Complete a contract, and your rep with the science division will increase. Meaning, you'll be able to take on more complex and challenging missions. Alright, one other thing that's really important here, guys, is that the weather changes constantly. Right now, I think on this island it pretty much just rains. Oh, wait a minute, we got a transmission coming in. I've got an interesting opportunity for you to consider. It will allow us to work together to create life. Pure life. If you've been listening to Dr. Malcolm, then you know how important this is to us. And to me. Basically, this mission requires you to acquire the Triceratops genome. This dinosaur has historically been found within North America, in particular around the Lance Formation Dig site. 
The mission will fail if any of the dinosaurs required by this mission are killed. Mm, okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and start it because that is important. Like I said, you need to take part in these missions. Now, this expedition. I knew you were my kind of person. Shoot. Hold on. Inquisitive, driven, and I knew you couldn't resist this opportunity. So let's get started. Now, this is how an expedition takes part. You basically. Together, we can create talk a new, again. authentic <laughs> version of our dinosaurs. That means a complete genome. And I think you are up to the challenge. Don't disappoint. So the, this part of the mission means we have to get to 50% of the genome. Now, when you first start out, you're basically losing money. That's because we have no attractions other than the Struthamimus walking around here all by himself. We're going to go ahead and get this expedition going. Left click on it. An expedition center will allow you to send dig teams around the world in search of new dino fossils. DNA can be extracted from these fossils, which our scientists can then turn into living, breathing dinosaurs. And that's our true lifeblood. So, it, you, like he said, you select a dig site, start an expedition with an available dig team. Now, when you first start off, you only have one. So, you're kind of limited. You can only send, you know, one out at a time. But once you get the other islands, you can send out more expedition teams and you know get more digs going on and you can dig at the same sites repeatedly to get more fossils eventually they will become depleted but you might as well keep sending them if you're trying to get certain species now we're looking for triceratops and there he is right there right there so either one of these two would be good the good thing about sending them here is the the cost is the same, and the chance is the same, but you also have the same chance to get more Struthamimus and another dinosaur called Edmontosaurus. That's a duckbill dinosaur. The people Good! Used to Your first expedition team is out. They'll bring back what they find to the fossil center for extraction. The Edmontosaurus is what they used to call the Trachodon back when I was a kid. Your job is simple, really. Create dinosaurs which attract visitors to your facilities, brings in capital, money, huh? Which means you can do more research to build better facilities and create more dinosaurs, and there you go. A circle of life, development and resources, nature and commerce. See? Simple. Yeah, he's one of those pains in the asses. <laughs> anyway, they're gonna go ahead as you can see the helicopter took off it's going to do its thing now all we can do is wait for it to get back and while that's happening I'm going to go ahead and see if I can put some food in here for this little guy because he is probably hungry by now now you can go in here and under enclosures you've got feeders I know it doesn't make a lot of sense it's not an enclosure but that's where they're located you collect a feeder and we want the first selection here. The, this is for tall herbivores, that's for carnivores, that's live bait, and that's for fish eaters. Fish eaters are going to come much later. We want the first one. We're just going to put one, maybe two out there for now. Let's get it going. That's going to give him some food. He's already got plenty of water. That's not an issue. Also, we're going to do a little bit of landscaping because these trees are kind of in the way the path here just a little bit now instead of adding trees we're going to take them away there we go that way we can see a little bit better you can always add them back if you want and you can also go in here to the scenery and add other things like big trees like these redwood trees and some rocks. Actually, I might add a rock right there just to give it a little oomph. Anyway, the expedition is coming back. You can hear the helicopter. Hopefully, they brought back fossils. So what we need to do, you can either hit go to fossils or go down to the 
Fossil Center 1. The and Fossil Center lets you extract DNA from fossils and amber in order to create new dinosaur genomes. Exciting! All right, extract fossils to build genomes for each dinosaur. Viable genomes allow you to create dinosaurs at the Hammond Creation Lab. And expeditions sometimes bring back extra finds that can be sold for cash. This is going to be very important later, especially when you're going between islands. And in a later episode, I will explain that further. For now, it's just going to be more cash. So let me go ahead and view the fossils we got. This is Lambert, head of security. Oh, we got security Yours, now. theirs, and mine. Welcome to the islands. So here's our basic conundrum. We want to keep our animals under control while simultaneously encouraging instinctive behaviors because these animals have potential as combatants. Look, everyone's fear object, myself included, is to have these animals running free and loose in the park. But we can't exploit them globally without taking some chances. All right. So basically, he's asking you to apply inventory space upgrade to a fossil center. Let me go ahead and select that. And we're going to take a look at these fossils. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to is these are all good fossils. These are not things that we can just sell. Now, as you notice, they have star ratings, which means how much viable genome is available in each one of them. If it's two or less, you're better off. Actually, if it's less than two, I would sell them. You can get money for them. You're not going to get much genome from them. If there are two or more, go ahead and click on them and click Extract DNA. And you can extract them all at the same time. And it looks like we've got a number of them. we got Ceratosaurus, we've got Admontosaurus, we've got Triceratops, and Struthamimus. Looks like we've got all of them. So, might as well get them all. If you happen to get an amber sample, that's usually four stars, and you always want to go ahead and extract the DNA from that because you're going to get very high ratings for that. Now, right now, we are nowhere close to getting 50% genome of Triceratops. You should extract genomes from fossils that have been collected inside your fossil center. That will increase the amount of viable data you have to create dinosaurs. I already did that, dumbass. <laughs> he, I just don't like that guy. He's one of those talking heads for the company. Anyway, the research center, that is something that's going to be important. The research center lets you improve your park in various exciting ways. New buildings, upgrades, and more await. And I think one of our missions required that we do that. It says research allows you to improve and expand multiple aspects of your facilities. You can research new and improved genes to modify your dinosaurs with. That's preposition <laughs> that's ending the sentence. Some items have division reputation requirements that need to be met before they become available. Alright. Well, we need to space upgrade to the fossil center. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can't improve that. Genetic research, enclosure, building upgrade, fossil center. This is what we want to do. It's going to cost us $300,000, but it'll be worth it in the long run. And it will take four minutes to complete. You can exit and let them do their thing while they're researching that. Now, one thing that's very important, guys, make sure that you are sending your expedition teams out all the time. It's very crucial because they can continue to get fossils and bring them back. I'm going to send this one back to this one that's specifically on Triceratops, which is still at 48%. There they go. Because we want to complete that other mission that the scientist requested us to do. We're only at 48% on the Triceratops. 
like I said, we only have one dinosaur right now. There are other things that we can do. We're going to go to the control room. We're going to see if there are any other contracts we might be able to request. I would suggest the security one as well. We've already did it with the science contract. This new contract could prove valuable to the security division. Yeah, they can give you a lot of money, and plus you're going to need to do it anyway. Okay, we need to increase dinosaur visibility to 10%. And apply inventory space. We've already started working on that one. So. Alright, we're going to. I think if we're going to improve dinosaur visibility, what we need to do is see if we can't apply a viewing center. This is a real good spot because it's nice and open. It views the the lake. So let's go in here under enclosures. There is a viewing gallery that we can put here and this will allow visitors to be able to watch the dinosaurs. I'll go ahead and complete the path. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is make another Struth and Mimus. The Struth and Mimus, they are herding herbivores, so they like to have more than one. Looks like the helicopter came back. We can check, check the fossil center. Now look, this, this has got some important key things here, guys. This one right here, this is amber. And the four stars for this one. That means we can get really good DNA from that. Incubated dinosaur with less than 100% genome can one fail. One of your dinosaurs has failed to incubate. Mm. I never said bringing back dinosaurs was going to be easy. Yeah, that can happen. They can fail to incubate. So what you have to do is when it happens, you have to go back to the Hammond Center. And you're going to have to discard him. This one, however, he came back. There he goes. All right, now they've got enough food. They should be good. Let's go back to the fossil center. Ruthiomimus. Interesting. Another dinosaur that furthers the case of a direct linkage to our modern birds. All right, looks like we got the inventory space for the fossil center increased. And when that happens, you can upgrade that. We'll upgrade that to. Increased inventory space. We'll buy it. You may have added to our workload, but the new buildings appear to be a success. That makes him happy. So we got a transmission coming in. Lambert here. I've got a new assignment that I think is perfect for your skill set. Give it a once over, then let me know if you're interested. Okay, we need a test dinosaur for this security appraisal. Acquire 50% of the Edmontosaurus genome, and we can proceed. The mission will fail if the mission required dinosaur is killed. Hmm. Well, I'm going to accept it. We're going to go back to this. We've been trying to do this for a while here. <laughs> Glad to have you on board. As you can imagine, the animals in the various facilities are constantly probing for weaknesses in our security systems. They're smarter and more devious than people give them credit for. 
but I refuse to underestimate their capabilities. That's why I'm always testing and evaluating our security protocols and barriers. And this is where you come in. I've got to give this guy Lambert his due. He actually sees these animals as both opportunity and threat. <laughs> Love you and Malcolm. Anyway. I'm going to need you to extract enough DNA from fossils to incubate and hatch a dinosaur. This is the first phase of this mission. Carry on. All right. I will do that. I'd strongly suggest you consider taking this contract. Modify and release the Struthamimus with a resilience trait of at least 41. I'll accept that too. All right, let's extract the DNA. We'll get more Triceratops genome off of that. These are threes. We'll extract that. And that. Now see, this one's only a one. I would suggest it's very poor is what it means. Low quality. I would sell that. That gets you $18,000 cash. And these are the items that they were talking about where you can get just money. There's 40,000 you can get from that. 120 for that. 120 for that. And 120 for that. So that's just free money, basically. Always good. You know, it's always good to get free money. So. So we need to release a Struth of Mimus with 41 resilience. Now I'm not sure. Okay, we now have a new viable genome, the Triceratops. So we have increased it to that level. Now whether or not this thing's going to actually be viable, it's anybody's guess. As you can see, as you get more genome, this percentage rate goes up. Once you get to 100%, you really will not have any op, uh, you know, issues with it coming out as viable or dying. We're going to try at 60% to see if this Triceratops will be able to be born. And I'm going to go ahead. Let me see the. Let's see. Resilience is only at 19%. That's not good. Oh no. Wait a minute. 40. So how do we get him up higher? Might have to do a modification to his genome. Or get better genomes. Let me see if there's any ability to change that. There, This allows you to go in and make the changes to the genome. The modified genome. I think the only thing we have available to us is this one. This does not incre it increases its lifespan, not its resilience. That's not going to help us. This one could increase its resilience if we add it. So I'm going to go ahead and enter to the ply of the gene. And then we're going to go ahead and incubate this guy. And if he's viable, we will complete that mission. We're going to send these guys out for more... We're going to actually send them out for the Admontosaurus. Which is what the security guy requested. So we got a lot of missions going on. <laughs> and I think we've got the research completed so we can go ahead. I would suggest getting the electrified fence set up. That's going to be key for later on when you get to the carnivores. Some more electricity for the viewing gallery otherwise it's not going to be functional this is the first time we're going to have issues with power now I'm going to go ahead and do a little landscaping get rid of these trees honestly this whole area I'm going to be doing some building might as well get the trees out of the way for now That way you can see how you can alter things. There we go. Like I said, you can always add it back. 
you can also get rid of the water or add the water. In this case, I'm going to get rid of it. And you can alter the terrain. You can flatten it or raise it. I'm going to try to flatten it as much as I can here. This should flatten everything real nice so that we can build some structures later on. Alright. Now, let's do something with the electricity here, guys. Now, I'm going to go ahead and join it to this. And we're going to see if we can't get power over to this area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a substation. And right here, this is what they call a substation. This will add a new area of influence for the electricity. I'm going to rotate it with the using Z and get it. As you can see, that little circle that is overlapping, now it's going to overlap that viewing area. And I need, once it's done, I'll have to join it with the pylon. And now it's powered. Now that we've got that viewing area, it should start getting people in here. That's what I'm hoping, anyway. Looks like we've got a dinosaur ready to release. And our Triceratops has been born. There she is. As you remember in Jurassic Park, they're all female. <laughs> Aren't they cool looking? I'm Owen Grady. Owen to my friends. I've seen things I'd rather not talk about, but it hasn't dampened my commitment to the dinosaurs. The raptors more generally, and me and Blue specifically. We have a special relationship, like what I have with Claire. Less complicated. Anyway, nice to meet you. Well, she started eating right away. Now I'm going to take a look at her. I see you've hatched a Triceratops. Might be cute now, but that's only going to last for about a week. <laughs> that's funny. God, that's a big animal. You met the objectives and secured a victory. I was expecting no less. All right, we completed that. Now we need to release the Struth and Mimus with 41 resilience. I don't know if that's going to be successful or not. We're going to check in here and see if that worked. And it is ready for release. <laughs> so this guy's got more resilience. As if we didn't have enough to watch already, they keep creating more. With your help, apparently. Not that I'm complaining. Just making an observation. Or a warning. Tooth hardiness. Without exceptional security, nothing else here would be possible. That's our mandate. And on Islam and Seras, you're showing the rest of us how it's done. You're deserving of this reward. 